Yo, 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 what's good? CFS, man, can we make some noise wherever you might be watching? Let's make some noise for God in this room. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Man, my name is Gabe, and I get to serve as the student director at the Dura campus. And I want to give a big shout out to all of our campuses right now, or if you're watching online, I want to give a big shout out to you as well. Uh, from our Core Gables downtown campus, our Relin West Kendall Palmetto Bay campus, uh, wherever you might be watching, I always say this every single Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday nights are the best nights. It's the best nights. They're the best nights. Why? Because we get to come together uh, and to wor we get to worship God. And I'm very, very excited for tonight specifically just because uh, we are only one week away from summer tours. I'm very, very excited for the next four weeks because we're going to be traveling and all of our campuses having a great time of worship, which actually we're going to be talking about that specifically tonight. But it's going to be exciting, so make sure to come through and invite your friends next week. If you haven't already, make sure to come through, invite your squad, invite your gang, uh, invite your small group, no matter where you might be, and come through physically to our location. We're going to have bus transportation, all that good stuff. So, uh, man, it's going to be awesome. And we're, going to be, uh, we're going to be celebrating all the different uh, countries, and so make sure to come through with all your friends. But because next week is summer tours, we're, in, we're, we're, we're doing this thing called the onesie, right? We have this uh, usually after, right before, after every event that we have. And it's just one, it's a one spinoff topic. And so tonight, we're going to be talking about worship, right? Something that we're going to be doing for the next four weeks. Actually, something we do every Wednesday night. But for the next four weeks, we're going to see, we're going to have a, a great time of worship. And I want to talk to us about uh, why worship is so important for us. A lot of us see us, you know, you see your friend, you see your, maybe your student director, your student leader. Uh, you see them lift up your hands. You see them uh, raise their voices. You see them uh, during our time of worship. Which, by the way, that's not the only thing that's considered worship in our lives. But during that time that we call worship, you see these things happening. You're like, man, why is it that we do this thing called worship, right? Who do we worship? Who do we, who do we praise? Who do we sing to? That's first and foremost that I want to answer through the scriptures. And then why is it that we worship? And we're going we're gonna to dive into God's word. But before we do that, you know, recently, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about because it's, it was all over social media all over, you know, Instagram, TikTok, all over everywhere, honestly, the news, everywhere. Uh, recently, uh, we were, the, Florida, the, the state of Florida, we recently won the National Hockey League Championship. And bro, let me tell y'all something. I am not a hockey fan, but this past year, I know y'all probably like, oh, that's flaw, that's, flake of, that's fake of you, Gabe. Um, I recently got into hockey just because I heard that the team was going good. Shout out to uh, Chris from our Coral Gables campus who, who's been consistent in trying to put me on hockey. But I never really got into it until this past year. Um, also, student uh, Marley, her dad, is also telling me, like, oh, go to get into hockey, get into hockey. We're going to get into a championship very soon. And he, they've been telling me all these things, but I really didn't believe it just because it's almost like the Marlins. You just doubt them, right? You doubt them all the time. But this past year, we won for the first time ever, ever in our franchise. We won the championship uh, for, our, for the hockey league. And I remember that just as when the Miami Heat won, just as when the Dolphins won a long time ago, uh, bro, the whole city, the, all, the whole state really blew up, right? We all have, we, we, there was different parades. There's people still going up in 49th Street, going crazy still for the Florida Panthers. And I remember that I was watching the last game. I didn't watch any other game. I watched the literally game seven, which by the way, if y'all hockey fan, y'all be keeping up. That was crazy. The fact that they were about to blow a 3-0 lead, crazy to me. But anyways, uh, I remember that in the seventh game, my family and I, we turned, on the, we turned on the hockey game and, bro, we were giving all of our attention. We were giving all of our time. We were giving everything to this game because if we win this game, we win the championship for the first time ever in history. And when it comes to this thing called worship, you know, wh wh whatever we give our, our time or, or whatever we treasure, whatever we give worth to, that is what is what's considered worship. See, at that very moment, we gave time, we gave our, our, our attention, we gave our, literally, our, our moment to, to come together as a family, to come together as my brother, my sister, my mom, my pops, everybody. We came together in the living room to see the Florida Panthers win the championship every single Wednesday night, every single Sunday morning when you come with your family and you join in our 1045 small group. Every single time we come together, we do this thing called worship. That is when we give our time, when we give our attention and give our worth to God. And so that's why we worship. We're giving a praise. We're giving Him worth, right? Now, why is it that we worship? Why does God deserve our worship? And how is it that, and through the scriptures, how is it that we give worship to God? And so we're going to dive into John chapter 4. But before we do that, let's go ahead and pray for our time. Father God, I thank you, God. 
uh, for the opportunity to come to you uh, in prayer, God, and, and worship you right now at this very moment. Even that it's not through praise and that's not through, uh, you know, through him, God. It's God right now. We're, we're about to get into your word. We're about to get into uh, the thing that you've called us to. Um, to go into, to learn more about you. And so, Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, for the ability to worship you, God, not only in the few moments, the few songs that we sing, not only in the, in the few times that we meet from Wednesday and Sundays, God, but, God, you've called us to live a lifestyle of worship. You've called us to live a lifestyle of worship from Monday through Sunday, God. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not just a Wednesday night thing. God, you've called us to live a lifestyle of worship. And so, God, I just pray for every single student who is watching right now at all of our campuses right now. They might not understand the concept of worship. They might understand why we lift up our heads. They might not understand why we shout out to you. They might understand why we read lyrics off the screen and, 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 and God, we give you praise. But, God, I pray that at the end of tonight, that they may understand why is it that we worship and how is it that we worship in accordance to your word. God, I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, God, for our time tonight. And I pray that this night would be a night of transformation for all of our lives. Lord, we thank you once more again. To Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. So we're going to be reading from John chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, you can open up there. Verse 23. John chapter 4, verse 23, Jesus here is speaking to a, uh, the Samaritan woman, and we'll get into that in a little bit, and look at what he says about worship. He says this. He says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers, so we'll say worshipers, yeah, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Someone say in spirit and in truth. Yeah. So it says, the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And then the, and the last portion of this verse, he says, for the Father, this is why we worship in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. So the Father, God the Father, he is seeking for true worshipers, not fake worshipers, but for true worshipers. How is it that we should worship? We should be worshiping in spirit and in truth, giving God his worth in spirit and and in truth. So not just with our flesh, not just with our mouths, but in, in the totality of our hearts and our souls, with our spirit, but also in truth. Not to be fake about it, but to be true about your worship, right? And so uh, before we get into that, I want for us to understand that worship is simply just that. It's giving God worth, right? And so uh, if you're writing down notes, write this down as your first point. How is it, or who is it that we worship? Write this down as your, for, your first point. You are to worship the creator and not the creation. You are to worship our creator and not the creation. You know, recently um, my uh, fiance's father-in-law, uh, his name is Jose, shout out to uh, him. He's taught me a lot about water. Uh, he's actually uh, the owner of a water uh, filtration company, and so he knows a lot about water. Um, I really didn't know a lot about water. I knew it was healthy for you. You will probably know, like, a lot of us, like, we're going to drink water every day. What are the cases to be? Like, it's, not, it's good for you, uh, for your body, for your, for your di digestion, all that good stuff. But one thing what he, that he's been teaching me is also the differences of water intake, right? So y'all know there's different water brands, right? You know that there's uh, Dasani, you have Aquafina, you got... Uh, Y'all know what it is. Shout, shout it out right now. Wherever you might be watching, shout it out. Another water brand. Boom. Uh, and so I've been looking at all these. He's been teaching me about all these different water brands. And uh, one, one water brand, honestly, that I, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all right now. Very, very honest with y'all. Y'all probably going to start screaming at me at whatever campus or, or you're watching at home. You're going to probably start screaming at me right now. The water brand that I don't like, right, that I do not like, I don't like how it tastes, is Zephyr Hills. I don't like Zephyr Hills. I don't know why Jessica's looking at me right now. She's like, how dare you? I, I don't like Zephyr Hills. Uh, I actually like, like Great Valley Water. I like uh, Aquafina, Dasani might sometimes, but my, my go-to are Great Value and Pure Life. Those are my go-to. Now, I remember when he asked me that question, like, hey, what's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite water bottle? I told him, I said, listen, my favorite is Great Value and, um, and Pure Value Water. And he actually told me, he's like, Gabe, that's actually one of the most unhealthiest waters that you can drink. And I'm thinking, oh, because it tastes good? Like, I'm thinking, like, it's, it's probably healthy, right? But he said, no, it's actually super unhealthy because the reality is those, that water, they have a lot of added 
of minerals and, 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 and additional things that is not, is not coming from the natural source or from the natural spring or the natural well that they're grabbing that water from. They're adding a lot of things so, they can, so, you, can, um, that, so you can add it to its taste and, and so it can taste good, right? And so I was thinking, I'm like, dang, so I can't be drinking all these water. He's like, no, 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 you could. It's still good for you, what it case to be. Like, it's still great. But the greatest thing that you could drink is probably Zephyr Hills because Zephyr Hills comes from the natural spring. It's a natural spring. So it doesn't have any added nutrients or added value to it. Gabe, why are you, why are you talking about water? What does that have to do with worship? Well, the reality is because a lot of us, right, we give a lot of our time. We give a lot of our attention. We give a lot of our worth to a lot of other things, right? That I'm not saying they're bad. They could be good. We can give a lot of our time to our family members, a lot of time to our friends. We can give a lot of time to our school. And those things are great. Some of those things, some of the things that we give our time to is not so good, right? Like the sunny, that thing is not good. It has a lot of salt, has a lot of sodium. You're probably gonna drink water. I know, I love the sunny. Just like, come on now. I love the sunny. I, I like the sunny too. But it's not good for me. Because what happens with Dasani has a lot of sodium and I end up drinking more Dasani and more Dasani is spending a lot more money and, a lot more, and for a lot more water that I don't need. So a lot of us even tend to spend a lot more time in things that we don't need to spend time with, right? And give worship to a lot of those things. And God has called us for us to be true worshipers, to seek, the, to seek God and to worship God in spirit and in truth, to completely surrender our time and our treasure and everything that we might have, everything that we need, to surrender to our creator, to the one who has created us, to the one who gives us the things that we, the, the, the things that we might need, to the, ones who, to the one who sustains us, to the one who provides us, to the one who gives us life. He says, hey, worship me in spirit and in truth. Now, the reality is, is that we end up not doing that. We end up giving a lot of our time. We end up giving a lot of our attention. Even during the, the eight minutes, ten minutes, during our time of worship, we get distracted. We go to the bathroom. On a Wednesday night, on a Sunday morning, the only time that we get to worship God through praising through Him, guess what happens? Oh, we're on our phones. We're on Instagram. We're talking about somebody else who's worshiping. And guess what's happening? Is that what God has called for both you and I to do, we're not doing it. We're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. We say that, oh, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. But when it comes to your lifestyle, even on a Wednesday night and on a Sunday morning, just those two few moments that you could give God your all, you don't. You don't because you're distracted, because... Um, you know, Fulanita's calling you and you're thinking about, or you're thinking about a homework uh, that you have to do at the end of the night that you prolonged, or you're thinking about uh, the summer, you're thinking about tomorrow morning and how you got to grind on this game and you're thinking about all these other things and God is waiting for your worship. And God's asking you and you're probably asking, do I even get, do I, is God even worthy of my praise? Is God even worthy of my time? And if you look at those things, if you look at the, those moments in your life where, man, you've been called to worship Him in spirit and truth, you don't. And so God has called us to worship Him as our creator and not all the things that He has created. Not to, when we, man, when we come in on a Wednesday night, I would, I would encourage you to, to take a step, of, a, a moment and just reflect and be like, you know what, I'm going to give God my all tonight. And you know what, tomorrow morning when I come back home from, when I come back home from, uh, from, from, from students and in the morning when I wake up, I'm going to give God my all this morning. And during my lunch, man, when I have some time to, to, uh, from school or whatever it case to be, man, during those three minutes, I'm going to think about God. I'm going to read some scripture and worship Him because He is my creator. He is my all in all. He is the first and the last. He's my alpha. Man. He is the one who's created all things. And so I'm going to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Why is that we do it? Because the Father is seeking us. The Father is seeking. Let's go back to John chapter 4, verse 23. It says this. The true worshipers will worship the Father and in, in spirit and in truth. Why? For the Father is seeking such people. He wants for us to do these things. Right? But the, the reality is, John Calvin, he puts it like this, is that what happens that we were created, right? Each and every one of us, we were created to worship. Right? We were created to worship. Whether it's God or some of us, we want to worship other things. And what, we, and what ends up happening is that our body becomes an idol factory. 
That's how John Calvin says it. He's a very famous theologian. He says, our body becomes like an idol factory where we start to idolize, meaning we put other things above God. We start to idolize other things, and then we start to give those things time, our, our treasure. We start to, we, we start to um, prioritize those things above God. And Ecclesiastes says that God has put eternity in our hearts. And that eternity that God has put in our hearts, he says, hey, don't take advantage of that that I've given you. So worship God with your heart. Worship God with your soul. Worship God with your mind. Worship God with everything that you are. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, why is it that we give God worship? We'll write this down to your second point. Our worship to God is worth it. Not only just for him, because he's our creator, he deserves all of our worship, but our worship to God is actually worth it for us. Our worship to God is actually worship, uh, worth it for both him and, our, and us as his children. See, when it comes to worship, we see that throughout scripture, God, when we give God worship, it's when we obey him and when we follow him in all things that he has commanded us to do, right? And so if he, if he tells us not to lie and, and we don't lie, that is considered worship because we say, God, you're worth of my obedience, right? When we come on Wednesday nights and we prioritize community, we say, you know what, man, I, I, I had practice this afternoon, but I'm going to prioritize God and I'm not going to come tonight uh, to worship God. And uh, uh, whether you're at Redley, whether you're at Core Gables, downtown, West Kendall, I'm going to prioritize God. And so I'm going to come tonight to, to worship God. That is worship because God says, you know what, you are saying that I am worthy of your time. But can I tell you something? It's not only just worthy, it's not only just worth it to God. It's also worth it for us. And I want to go back to the Panthers game real quick because I remember, like what I said, I'm, I'm, a fake, I'm a fake Panthers fan, all right? I'm a fake hockey fan. I just got into hockey this past year. I'm just celebrating, the, you know, the Panthers this past year. I ain't going to cap. I ain't gonna, I'm going to be real with y'all, right? And so I'm not a big, I'm not a, you know, Panthers fan OG. I'm not. But I'll tell you this much, I'll tell you this much, that when we came together as a family, my parents, my brothers, my sister, although we weren't in that game, we, we didn't pay that ticket, that, that huge amount, amount of money for that, to be in that stadium, to, to see them play, right? We were there present, definitely watching from ESPN, and we were going crazy for them, right? When we were giving it our all, cheering on from, the, from, from our home. Why? Not only because, man, they earned it, and they went, they went through it, they toiled through, and they're pushing through, but man, we were supporting for them. This is our team. This is our, uh, our state, right? This is, our, this is our, um, our people. Why do I say this? Because let me tell you something. When we worship God in spirit and in truth, and when we say, God, you are worth it, when we come together as a church family, Brothers and sisters, your friends, your peers in Christ. And we say, God, you are worthy of our praise. God, you are worthy of our worship. God, you have been so good to me. God, you are the king of my heart. You deserve my praise. God, you deserve because you are worthy of, all, of it all. Let me tell you something. As a child of God, when you worship him in that, within your, in, 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 in your wholeness of heart and truth, to know at the bottom of your heart that you are giving the one who deserves it all, it gives you so much peace that you are taking steps of obedience, that you are saying, God, you are worthy of it all. I'm giving you this time. I'm giving you my life. I'm giving you this very, very moment. I'm, I'm raising up my hands to you. I'm lifting up my, God, I'm getting on my knees for you. I'm surrendering this time for you. It's worth it because, man, God is delighted in your worship. In the same way, the Panthers team, I'm pretty sure that as when they won and they got the tr trophy, they're probably thinking about their family. They're probably thinking about their fan base. They're probably thinking about all the people that has been supported and they're delighted and they are, they are, 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 and they are, enjoy, they are uh, rejoicing at that very moment. God is rejoicing when he sees his children, when he sees you worship him in spirit and in truth as well. And so it's not only worth it for God, our worship, but it's also worth it for us to, man, know that, man, we are taking steps of obedience to follow God and say, God, you're worth it. God, you are worth it. Now, I want to give you some tips, right? Because y'all probably like, man, what? Like, I look at my student director. I see Rob from West Kendall Campus. I see Berman shouting out praises. I see, you know, Josser, uh, Lou. Uh, you know, I see them lift up their hands. And, uh, why is it, right? Like, how is it that we have to worship? I'm going to give you guys some five tips 
I would encourage you to write it down. The first thing is this, is that worship begins and it deepens with an intimate relationship. W worship, it all begins and it deepens with an intimate relationship. It starts with that. Like if you don't have a relationship with God, you cannot worship God. But how is it that we ought to worship someone that we do not know? How can we worship God if we do not know God? Right? And so it first starts with, if you don't have a relationship with God, you know, tonight is the night to start a relationship with God and then to continue to deepen your relationship with God. I, you know, I, I can recall when I, back when I was a student in the ministry, like I remember like when I was a student, in my, when, I be, when I first started a relationship with God, my worship, when it comes to, as I reflect back, my worship to God wasn't so true. It wasn't so evident, not just on Wednesday nights and on Sunday mornings, but throughout my life. I look at my life, I'm like, I wasn't reading as much. I wasn't praying to God as much. I wasn't giving my, God my attention and my time as much as I should have. But as I continue to walk in obedience and continue to love the Lord with all that I have, and as I continue to realize that I'm a sinner and, I, and that I need God and that, man, I, I just need Him more in my life. And my, my relationship starts to become more intimate. I start to deepen my relationship with Him. I start to see the posture of my worship change. I start to see that, man, when I, when I went up to the front, it wasn't like I lift up my hands right here. Man, I start to lift up my hands here. Because I'm like, God, you're worthy of it. God, I, I, I see that you're changing my life. I see that you're doing a work in my life. So I'm going to lift up my hands to you. There's some moments where I start to cry because, man, I either fell short or I, I, I felt like I was, I was sitting before God. I'm like, God, I know that I need you. And so I start, I start to cry before God. There's moments where I start to get on my knees before God. And so the whole point of it all is that worship not only begins, but it deepens within your intimacy and your relationship with God. So that's the first thing. The second tip that I'll give you guys when it comes to worship is that worship comes from the heart. Worship comes from the heart. An example that we can look at in the scriptures is David. David, he was known to be not only a man of the Lord's own heart, but he was also known to be a true worshiper, right? He not only knew how to play the heart, but he danced for God. He shouted out to God. He praised to God. He would, uh, he would get on his knees before God. And we see these things. And the reason why we look at David's life uh, and we see these, these things happen was not only because he had a, a relationship with God, that he deepened his relationship with God, but also that we see his heart before God. Worship comes from the heart. It doesn't come from the lyrics on the screen. It doesn't come from the people on stage singing. It doesn't come from your student director. It doesn't come from your friend. It doesn't come from anybody else. It comes from you. It comes from your heart. And if it doesn't come from your heart, it's fake. You're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. And so there's some moments in my, and there's some moments during our time of worship or during my time, my alone time with God, where I just got to close my eyes and say, and really look at my life and look at my heart and see, and see the, the depths of my heart and say, God, if there's a confessed sin, God, I, I got to confess those things before you. God, if I'm not praising you, I'm not worshiping you in spirit, God, I got to start worshiping. And I, gotta start, I start to have to worship from my heart. Worship comes from the heart. Third hint is this. Very, very crucial. Very key for all of us right now. Is to block all distractions. Block all distractions. You know, Madara peeps know this. Is that before we get into worship, Listen, if you got to use the bathroom, go use the bathroom. If you got to walk away from somebody because they're being too distracted, walk away. If you got to close your eyes because there's a lot of noise around you, close your eyes. Why? Because right now what you are doing in your time of worship is that you're giving God, his, his, you're giving God what he is worthy of. You're giving God what he is worthy of. You're giving God your full undivided attention. So block all distractions. Sometimes there's even sin in our lives that prohibit from us to worship God. Maybe you're, in a, you're right now currently in addiction. Right now you're currently living in addiction. You're currently living in sin. And you see everybody else worshiping God, but when you look at your life and you're looking at everybody else, you're like, I can't do that. And guess what? The enemy is distracting you from worshiping God. And so right at the end of the message, I'm going to encourage you, take some time to confess that sin before God. So you can now worship him in spirit and in truth. Block all those distractions. The fourth thing I'm going to give you guys, last two, stick with me. The last two is to prepare your heart. To prepare your heart before worship. Very, very crucial. Um, because a lot of us, man, we get late to worship. Right? We get late to, student, to, to Wednesday nights. We get late to our Sunday mornings. 
And what happens is that because we are late, right, what happens is that we're in a hurry, we're in, we're in the hurry, hurry, and we're running and we're, getting to, we're trying to get to the front. We miss out to the first song of worship or we're in the middle of worship and our hearts and our minds are not focused up on God. And guess what? Our hearts are prepared. There's sometimes, I'm not going to lie to y'all, where even I get here early, I get on a Wednesday night early, right? And I get there on time, but man, my, my, my mind and my heart are on some, are another thing. My mind and my heart, as a matter of fact, even right before this message, I'm not going to lie to y'all, literally before recording this message, I had to pray and say, God, clear my mind. There's a lot of things on my mind. Prepare my heart for this. I'm about to open up your word. Prepare my, heart, prepare my mind before. Uh, prepare my heart before you, God. Because a lot of, a lot of times... Uh, outside noise and, 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 and things that are happening in our lives, it can inflict, it can kind of wound us from our worship. So prepare your hearts. Take some time to pray. Get there early on a Wednesday night to prepare your heart before worship. And the last but not least, but definitely not least, the tip, the last tip that I want to give you before worship, when it comes to worship, is to listen to godly music throughout the week. Something so crucial. Something that, honestly speaking, that I, I need to work on myself to continue to listen to godly music throughout the, throughout the week. Why is this important? Because worship isn't about Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings when we, when we listen to a godly song. It's not just about a Wednesday night. It's not just about Sunday morning. Worship should be our lifestyle. See, Jesus, when he speaks to the woman at the well, the woman at the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman, her lifestyle was that she was, having, uh, she was having sexual intercourse with multiple people. Not just with one man, but with multiple people. She, had, she was cheating on her husband. She had five husbands before the husband. She, and so Jesus actually approached her and he says, listen, I know the truth. I know what you're going through. And listen, I'm calling you, I'm calling you in love to worship me in spirit and in truth. And listen, no matter what sin that you might be going through, God has called for you and I to step out of sin and to step into worship. Not only on Wednesday night, not only on a Sunday morning, but continuously throughout the week. To stop listening to the music that is, that is, indulged, that is tempting you to sin. and that's th that Now you're thinking of that girl. You're thinking of that girl. You're thinking of that uh, drug. You're thinking of that time. You're thinking of those things. No, he says, now refrain from that and start listening to, to, to music that will direct you to me. Matter of fact, CFS, listen, we have actually a playlist literally just for you. So, uh, man, you're like, Gabe, I want some resources. I, I kind of want to listen to more godly music. We literally have that for you. Go to our student director. Go to one of our student leaders, and we will provide that for you. We have a playlist just for you, designed for you, so you can listen to godly music, and you can worship him throughout the week. And so, practice these five tips. I would encourage you to, if you, if you forgot one of those tips, go to uh, either myself or go to one of your student directors and, and, and ask for one of those tips because I think it'll help us when it comes to our worship. Now, I'm going to end off with this. Is that not only that uh, it's God is worthy of our worship because He is worth it and because it's worth it for us as the children of God. But when we look at Christ, when we look at the life of Jesus, right, God saw that it was worth it. God saw that it was worth it to send his one and only son, Jesus himself, to die on a cross for both you and I. And I think that is the most important, out of everything that I've said, this is the most important thing that God has seen for both you and I, us as sinners, us who are fallen short, us who have missed the mark, us who have disobeyed God, us who have said no to God and yes to other things, who have not worshipped him in spirit and in truth, he has said in his own mind and in, in, in his own love towards us, he said, you know what? You are worthy for me to send my own son to die on a cross for you. For you. I've sent my one and only son to die on a cross for you because I love you. And I care for you. And you know what we do? We deny that. We don't give him our time. We don't give him our worship. Our lifestyle isn't worship to God. To all the other things, yes it is. But to him it's not. 
And he gave up his, his one and only son, his son Jesus, to die for our sin so that we could have eternal life. And then on a Wednesday night, we give him 30 seconds. Out of the eight minutes of worship, out of the 20 minutes of listening to God's word, out of the 40 minutes, just 40 minutes, out of the 168 hours, 40 minutes of our small group time, we're distracted and we're fooling around. And he gave up his one and only son for us. How much is Jesus worth to you? Is Jesus even worthy to you? That's the question I'm going to leave off you. Leave, leave off is, 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 is the concept that, man, I am a cre I'm creation and, and God as a creator has called for me to worship him. Is that something that's even in your mind, in your brain? And if it's not, listen, it's okay. Because there's going to be a point in your time where you have to start prioritizing God and worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And tonight is that night. Tonight is a night that I, CFS, no matter where you might be, I'm going to encourage you that no matter where you might be in your life, if you are not worshiping in God, worshiping God in spirit and truth, the Father has sought, the Father seeks for you to, call, seeks for you to, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so tonight you need to make that moment. Tonight you need to make that decision. And so if that is you today, tonight, where I'm actually going to, we're going to end up our time in worship. And what I want for you to do, I'm going to pray, pray us out. What I want for you to do is that after I pray, I'm going to call everybody up to the front and take these hits, take these tips to these tips and apply these tips to your life right now. Block out all the distractions. Prepare your heart. As I pray right now, prepare your heart. Confess those sins before God. If you need to walk away from, from somebody, walk away from that person. Get on your knees. Lift up your hands. Whatever you, might, whatever you need to do to worship Him in spirit and in truth, do it. Because God has called you to it. He is worthy of our worship. Let's pray before God. Father God, I thank you, God, for this time. And God, I thank you, God, because, God, you have called us and you, have, uh, you yearn for us to, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And so at this very, very moment, God, at all of our camps, I pray right now for every single student who is listening to this message that they will prioritize this time right now. And not just for this night, but God, as we continue to congregate, as we continue to go into some tours, as we continue to worship you, God, may they continue to live a lifestyle of worship. Not just on Wednesday night, not just on Sunday mornings, but on Monday mornings, on Monday nights, on Tuesday mornings and Tuesday nights. No matter where they might be, may they live a lifestyle of worship. And so, God, I thank you for this moment. It's in Jesus' presence we pray. Amen. And amen. Y'all can go ahead and start coming to the front. Let's get ready to worship our God in spirit and truth. Let's do this.